Welcome into the SWX studio. Well, it's Saturday, and that means it's football day here in Montana, so we're going to start it off with the boys from Missoula. Let's head to a rainy Washington Grizzly Stadium now, but that's not stopping the front row of shirtless dudes. They're braving the weather. First quarter scoreless as the Mammoth defense keeps Dalton Sneed and Montana at bay. Huge interception by the Hawks DB Anthony Budd. But in the second quarter, the Grizzlies are going to get on the board first. Sneed drops back on this connection to his tight end Bryson Deming. 7 nothing Grizzlies early on. But the Hawks would respond, though, after a methodical drive, a touchdown run from Devil Jones. The devil is a lie, but he ties the game at seven. Very next play, though, it's the Grizzlies' Malik Flowers getting the kick off. And I'll tell you what, he's going to do his best Devin Hester impression. You speed up the tape, and you'll watch him go 100 yards to be exact for the Montana touchdown as he goes all the way to the house. Grizz take this game 47-27 to the final. Move on to the boys from Bozeman in the first quarter. The Spartans getting on the board first. Jawan Carter finds Anthony Williams in the end zone for six. Later in the first, Bobcats with the fake field goal. Kicker Tristan Bailey has all kinds of space, and he picks up the big game all the way down to the 15-yard line. Next play, Logan Jones with some room. He takes it in for the touchdown to tie the game. Clock winding down in the first. Jones gets the ball again. He breaks the tackle and powers into the end zone, showing off the strength there for the touchdown. Montana State attacking again. Tucker Rovick, he's starting in place of Bauman, and he finds a wide open Coy Steele. He was in his own zip code right there. MSU goes up 21 to 7. Norfolk State responding though. Kevin Johnson pounds it in to bring the Spartans within a touchdown. That Bobcat offense, they were humming, making sweet music. Rovick finds Travis Johnson in the back of the end zone, taking advantage of the opportunity. Bobcats win this one 56 to 21. To Montana Western we go. Homecoming for the Batland Bears out at Herb Clint Field. And they would pack the crowd there. Rocky driving down the field on their first drive and punch it in via the QB keeper by Drew Korf. Rocky striking first with that 7-0 lead. Next drive, Rocky moving the ball well once again, but Korf would try to fit this one into a tight window. No, 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 my friend, he's going to get picked off. Montana Western getting the momentum back on their side. Bulldogs in the red zone as John Jund finds Nate Simpkins on the out route for the touchdown. That'll put Western up 14-7 in the second quarter. Start of the second half now as Kyler Prant takes the handoff. He's going to slip out of the pile. He's got some running room. He's got reservations for six as he gives the Bulldogs the two-score lead over Rocky 21-7. Bulldogs win this one 38-7. How about some more Frontier Conference action now? This one in Helena between Carroll College and MSU Northern. We'll start it off like we always do in the first quarter when Devin Bridgewater, he's going to air it out to Shane Sipes for a 43-yard touchdown strike, 7 nothing. Saints lead. Move ahead, second quarter with the Saints up 14-0. Major Ali, he's a major problem for defenses. He takes it in from 15 yards out, but they would miss the extra point. Saints lead 20-0. Now, if you've been paying attention to Carroll College football this season, you know we wouldn't be able to go a full highlight without seeing Matthew Burgess. He takes this one in from 29 yards out. Saints lead 30-13. They go on to win this one 54-26. Hey, make sure to tune in to SWX tomorrow night at 6 p.m. for Saints insider our Jeremy Schnell. We'll sit down with the Saints' two-star freshman, Matthew Burgess and Zach Spiroff, and I promise you, you won't want to miss it. Speaking of Carroll College, after 17 years as the head football coach of the Saints, Mike Van Deest decided to retire following last season. But today was a special day for him and his family. Van Deese was inducted into the Carroll College Hall of Fame today in his 17 years with the Saints, six national championships, 14 conference championships, and an overall record of 190 and 36. I'm not a math guy, but that sounds pretty good. In an interview earlier today, he said that he's very honored and also said that he would love to get back into coaching as an assistant somewhere, so look out for that down the line. Well, college football isn't the only gridiron action going down today. Some high school teams were in action, including a matchup in the Electric City between the Bulldogs and the Mustangs. Shoto taken on GFCC. Check out a couple of cute pups at the game today. Perfect weather for a game. First quarter, Mustangs already up 6-0, but the Bulldogs are barking back. John Rappold looking deep for Colby Kobach, who hauls it in to tie the game at 6 apiece. Second quarter now, Shane Garris, he's got the wheels and he's going to show them off here. Splits the defense and gets a block. He's got reservations for 6 and gives the Mustangs the lead. Later in the second, Garris on the QB keeper, but you got to hold on to the ball, my man. John Rappold, he's going to jump on it and it's Bulldogs ball. But it looks like Rappold may have caught the turnover bug because next Bulldogs possession, he throws a pick right into the teeth of the Mustangs defense and they would get the ball back. GFCC wins it by a score of 41-20. 
Football, not the only sport in action today. As I alluded to earlier, we had some great volleyball action in the Electric City as well. Great Falls Bison taking on Billings Senior. We're going to jump right into this thing. Great Falls High with the set on the outside to Taylor Vandermars. And check this out. She is going to get the first kill of the day. Moving on, Billings trying to answer right back. The six foot three Bailey King. She's going to softly tip this one over. Barely even needs to jump. Now Keller back to serve for senior. And look at this. Vandermars just taking a look at this one. She may have thought it was going out, but it doesn't. Senior not slowing down, keeping the momentum coming and going. King with the kill, putting all her power into this one, not holding back. The Bison never have been ones to back down from a challenge. They answer right back as Tessa Trainum powers this one right on the corner. And from here, it was all great falls to finish this one out. Vandermars making up for that previous mistake and takes this first set for her team. As of airtime, no final score has been reported. Let's move across the river. Rustler is back at home after the win yesterday against Senior. And they're looking to keep that momentum moving. Early on, Rustlers take the easy point right off the bat with a misplay from Hayden Baumberger, but she's going to make up for it later. Rustlers gaining ground early on, up five, and look at this a little back and forth action. Olsen and Hiller, and then back to Olsen. She'll find the old to get the point for the Rustlers. Skyview now down 9 0. They're looking to get on the board. Olsen trying to find the hole, but defended well again by Olsen. Finally, in Baumberger. I told you she was going to make up for it. She gets the tip for Skyview's first point. Skyview working their way back, and what do you know? Another tip in by Baumberger. She steps up for her team, putting the mistake in the past. And Skyview looking to work their way back. CMR says, you know what? That's enough. No comebacks today. Allie Olsen powers this one in the ground. No final score to report there either. And don't forget to stay tuned for our 10 o'clock show over on ABC. I'll have football recaps for you if you missed any of them, as well as plenty of soccer action, a little bit of hockey as well. That's your check on sports. I'll see you at the desk.